beautiful. Welcome to another episode of your favorite podcast, Closing Deals and Heels. My name is Kayla and I am your host. And today I have brought on a very special lady, Brittany. Um, she's in high ticket sales. But before that, this girl did lots of stuff. She not only served in the military, she also was a personal trainer, nutritionist. And she's like, man, I want to learn how to make more money, how to help people. And so she got into sales and she's done over a million dollars in sales so far. So I wanted to bring her to the stage. Brittany, what's up, Queen? Hello. Hi, so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course. Hey, girl. Hey, we were hey. talking a little bit earlier and we we're like, hey, let's just have a girl talk. And so if you're listening to this right now and you've been missing like a girl talk on like the real, real things that actually happen in sales that no one talks about. I was going to say something inappropriate. I was like, pull up your panties. Oh, that sounds so bad. I was like, <laughs> out of a twist. yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it? Um, my editing team, please stop saying that. <laughs> edit that part out edit that part out please um, yeah so like hold on to your britches there you go yeah, there it is. hold on to your britches because um we're gonna have a real talk right now so Brittany, can you introduce yourself like what the hell how do you go from the military to fitness like what how did that happen yeah so i mean i started off you know going to school typical you graduate high school went to college. I was like pursuing exercise science. So I always had that like baseline of fitness. I, I played sports. Mm -hmm. um, then my senior year in college, I had to drop out. So of sports of college cool. is oh. yeah, I couldn't afford it. Oh, sure. Financially. Okay. I had like a not that great family support. Like we were barely scraping by. Um, mm. so I got creative. And I was like, how can I afford school? How can I finish? Like, I have $40,000 of debt. I'm a waitress. Like, I, I don't know what to do. So I was looking through my email, saw an email from the military, and they were like, hey, we'll pay your loans. And I was like, all right, sign me up. So I literally called them. <laughs> oh, my God. I was just on my no, mind. like, literally. That's like amazing. I called, I called uh, the recruiter like that day after like crying to all the counselors, Hey, give me money. I need loans. Like nobody would help me at the school. Okay. Um, so I called the recruiter. He had me take the ASVAB that day, drank a lot of caffeine, took it. And he's like, we'll give you whatever job you want. And I'm like, okay, I don't care about the job. Just literally give me the one with the most money that pays for my school. So wow. yeah. then I went to boot camp like a month later. Um, traveled around a, a bit for the military and I ended up finishing my degree in exercise science. So that brought me to like fitness, you know, what, what job did you do in the military? Okay. So, <laughs> all right. Yeah. It's a little bit embarrassing. I'm not going to lie. Oh no. So I got like almost a perfect score on the ASVAB and he was like, you can literally do whatever job you want. And I'm like, I don't care what job it is. Give me the one with the most money. So the one with the most money was the most undesirable, but I did not care because I was like, whatever. Um, so yeah, like I did people's laundry. I was thinking something horrible. I'm thinking I'm like janitor. I mean, it was a little gross. gross. Still had to go through basic training and like dig in the trenches and be in the mud and sleep outside and shoot guns um to do with people's laundry hey so, you are creative you're like hey i'm gonna get through this i'm not gonna get shipped out like this is gonna be great yeah it was a bit of a wake-up call but i got to meet some really good people and there were people in the same situation as me so it was definitely character developing for sure yeah, yeah. okay and then from there you got so like did you finish school at the same time or like you went back to school afterwards or how does that work yeah so i was in the reserves, like I went to basic training and then I transit transitioned to the reserves. So that was like one weekend a month, mm. uh, week weekend warrior type deal. Yeah. And then like two to four weeks in the summer where of course, like I had the most undesirable job. So we had the least funding. So I literally like had to sleep in the trenches with no air conditioning and oh in the God. summer it was so <laughs> it was great. Um, but I finished school during the yeah during that time. I had like okay. another 
two years left. So amazing. So, so you finish. And then at what point were you like, I want to go into sales? Like wh- when did that happen? Okay. So that's a little bit of a story as well. So I digress. Um, I mean, I did the whole personal training thing in person. Yeah. You obviously have to have some sales skills there. Um, I did that for a bit, managed some gyms and then COVID happened. So everyone was going online. So I like hired a coach to teach me online personal training. So I was trying to do that, trying to learn sales and then like still working in person, doing the, you know, personal training, building my online presence. Um, And then what was it like a year and a half ago? Mm -hmm. Randomly saw an ad for someone talking about online closing. So then I clicked on the ad and like, of course, it's like coming up on repeat on my Instagram. Retargeted from- like crazy. Yes. Um, so then I was like, what is this online closing? Because I did, did high ticket sales for myself. Yeah. I was like kind of familiar with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just like invested into that course too. Learned s- sales skills. Then they paired me with a company that I'm at now. Um, and then I came across you and- hey. We're working on getting that closing percentage up, like very confident um, with my sales now, thanks to you for sure. So that's the story on how we got there as well. Okay. So let's talk about that really fast because um, you did sales training before, right? And then when I met you, I've like reviewed some of your calls, saw stuff and I've definitely seen huge improvements and stuff on your side as well. So just from your perspective, like is it, is it different, you know, in terms of like methodology, like what do you feel like the biggest thing is that you learned that changed something for you? Yeah. I mean, the methodology was fundamentally like kind of the same, mm-hmm. but we just implement it in such a softer, more gentle, feminine and like authentic way, yeah. which really resonated with me because I would get on calls with men and women, I'd be trying to sell them this fitness and I knew it's good for them, but they don't know it's good for them. They just think I'm trying to sell them something. So with your methodology and the training, like it just helped me, you know, dive deeper into who I am as a person and have more gratitude for the person on the other side of the screen, you know, you're getting on a call with somebody and they don't know you like, why are they going to buy this from you unless you make them realize? Yes. I need this, you know, like this is going to change my life. So I feel like that methodology and like your approach is just so much different than what's typical in the sales industry. Yes. Very like people don't feel like they're being sold to at the end of a call. They'll be like, thank you so much for having this conversation with me. We (laughs) ride together. Like, (laughs) feels so much more like in alignment and authentic with yeah. who I am and like, yeah. who I'm be, you know, well, I've watched you grown personally too, which I think is really cool. Like over the past, you know, several months as well, just like the way that you're interacting with people, like your leadership skills increasing the way you can communicate and conversations outside of work, you know? And so I just been watching you there. I like, can you like touch on that a little bit? Like what's going on there? So like with personal development, yeah, I mean, I've been working on myself. Yeah, I discovered personal development like with my first coach, which was Mm -hmm. back during COVID. So that was like 2020, 2021. Oh, wow. Yeah. But, you know, I wasn't as consistent with it. And like, yeah, I'd go through periods of reading self-help books and then like, talk about it, get all excited, then go back to my old ways. Yes. You know, and I just felt like I never had like the internal confidence that I have now, just even with sales, like being able to help someone just made me more confident. Mm-hmm. Um, And like during your program, like we talk about money, like money is a very touchy subject for people. Yes you know, and like my relationship with money growing up is we don't have any, I have to drop out. Like I can't afford it. Like my parents would fight about money. Yeah. There, there was never enough. And, you know, just reframing 
your mind and your relationship with money, like you have to do that to be able to sell things because it's not about the money. It's about what you're getting yes. from the product. So that was like probably one of the biggest things that I've gotten. Yeah. The, the first thing, you know, just redefining my relationship with money, knowing that you can make X amount, you can make more than that. Like everything is energy is abundant. Money is abundant. And having a growth mindset is just going to help you so much more and help your mm -hmm. problem to be able 1, to do into that. Hmm? I said, well, 1000%. And I think also that we ruin sales because of a money issue in our head. So if there's like, I don't know about you, but for myself personally, if I had like things that were due or coming up like years ago, you know, I'm like, oh my God, like I really need to close this and it changes the energy in the conversation yeah. or, or on the opposite. Like whenever I started making a lot of money in sales, like I would start blowing through money. I would start like having inconsistency. I'm like, I'm actually pretty good. Like I made 20 grand in the past couple of weeks. Like I'm, I'm fine. I'm not going to really work. And I'll just like chill. Because I would finally feel safe yeah. for the first time ever. And, and that's a really dangerous place to be. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, and I think for us, if, if you've been in survival mode for a long time and you're not used to like being in abundance, like once you start hitting a floor where you feel a little bit of comfort, then we, we want to sit in it for a second. We're like, oh my God, this is so nice. And then we freak out because the next month is there. We're like, ah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And you can't sit in it too long because that's when you just get comfortable and you stop developing. Like, yeah, see the like same. that's, I think that's why in your program and like with the girls that you teach, like we have those mindset Mondays and like development yeah. is always a part of the curriculum because you can't forget about yourself. Yeah. Everyone puts ourselves last. You know, I think as women, we do that all the time versus learning how to put yourself first. So talk to me about like, I always ask this, but I always want to know, have you had an experience in sales where a guy like asked you out on a date or made you feel uncomfortable or made you feel incompetent in a sales conversation? Like, have you had one of those experiences yet? Mm. Have I? I don't think like on a sales conversation, but I think just like at networking events and stuff like. OK, there we go. Let's go there. Before. Finding myself and like my newfound confidence, like I would connect with people and be like, yeah, so excited. So, oh, lies. I'm lying. I remember. OK, so it was like my old job. OK, I was like managing a gym. It was like an IV red light therapy and cold plunge yeah, yeah. gym plays. I was a manager, personal trainer. And yeah, there was a client in there. Um, just being friend. I thought I was being friendly, you know, thinking I'm selling him, helping him. Oh yeah. You can do this, this, and this. He buys oh, everything. God. Then he's like messaging me on Instagram hearting my story, yeah. liking everything. And I'm just like, okay, this know. is weird. Like, I'm just not going to reply to this guy or I'll just like yeah. like thing back just because he comes into my place of work. So it's like, you know, I can't be rude to him. Yes. And, and like, that's always so awkward, right? There's like this thing where you like have to be nice to them because you want the money or because they're a client or whatever it is. And then there's like this awkward thing. I'm with you. Like, yeah. keep going. Yeah. And like, he replied to my story one day, like said, I look good or something. I don't even remember like what exactly he said. And I said, like, thank you or something. And then he like got really weird. And I was like, dude, you literally have a wife and kids. Like you're, you're posting your wife and your children all over your page. And why are you like talking to me like that? This is really strange and disrespectful. Yeah. And he, like, apologized. And then next time he what? Hold on. What did he say? He was like, oh, I thought you were into it. I'm sorry. I was getting the wrong messages from you. Ah! <laughs> okay, let's pause there because I see this all the time. And I think for us women, sometimes it's really hard for us to have trust issues with men because guys don't get what we get all the time. They don't understand. Like, 
a guy doesn't walk down the street and gets catcalled by a bunch of different women, right? Mm -hmm. A guy doesn't, you know, unless like, I mean, I'm not, not never, but on a typical like average, like I'm sure a guy's not opening up his DMs and seeing like random ass pictures with, you know, like some girl be like, hey, ready for you, baby. Like, you know, like they don't get the same thing. And we as women have experienced men that are supposed to be in a relationship that are posting their families being disrespectful to us or like we know that like they're you know maybe like sleeping with somebody else like like an event or something and, and like we see it and we know that they're supposed to be like faithful and like they're married and have babies and stuff and like we see it all the time yeah all the time so i think that it messes with our heads because if we're like hey if one guy does it then they all do it mm-hmm you know, and so then it messes it up for us. Like, do you, do you experience that too? It, like, it just blows my mind a little bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, and that trust issues, like, I'm just getting over those. Like, I'm in a relationship now, and I really trust him with, like, everything I have. And we've, like, had to communicate a lot about that. Because, yeah. like, I've been cheated on every single yeah. person you talk to. Like, every yeah. single person I dated. Um and then just seeing random men like who are married with children hitting on the girl at their gym, like the manager at their gym, like it's just like, dude, who, what else are you doing? Like that is just. Yeah. You know, um, and the way you are in one area of your life is typically the way you are in other areas of your life. I, I listened to this podcast with this guy saying he's like, hey, if you're cheating on your wife, I don't want to do business with you because if you're cheating yeah. on her, you cheat on me. Yeah. So, oh, wow. There you go. You're true. Like surrounding, even like being around people like that. It's, it's, yeah. Well, I think it's interesting because we as humans, we're just all having a human experience, right? And like, no one needs to judge anyone on anything, but we all have our own things that we deal with, mm -hmm. you know? And, and typically it's just, it's hard because we look up to men around us. Like we're naturally wired to do so. We're, we look to them to be problem solvers to be our heroes, like to make things happen. And so when we see them like not standing in integrity, it, it like puts a little notch in ourselves of like, huh, like there's something off there or something going on. Um, so I find it interesting because it's not just, you know, guys with that. I mean, it's also, have you ever met like a personal trainer that is like really overweight and like teaching you how to like be healthy? Mm. We see I mean, I haven't met one, but I've seen them all over the internet. Like, yeah, I had one. I had one before, right? And so I'm like, how are you going to tell me that I can't eat this? You know, I, and nothing against gaining weight. I gained 68 pounds when I had my daughter. I know what it's like when my freaking sweat pants don't fit. So nothing about that. Yeah. My thing is, is like, don't try to like be a certain way when you're not. Like, why can't we just have a little bit of authenticity somewhere? Mm-hmm. Um, and try to be the best version of yourself. If you're not happy in your relationship, then freaking leave. Yeah. <laughs> well, why pretend? Why showcase your family and post it online and pretend to be something that you're not, you know? Yeah, it's it's just very interesting. Um, and I feel like those people are just at their core, like maybe they don't know who they are or, mm -hmm. you know, and just with self-development and character development and you know working through these things recently like just being able to like stand in who you are and like hey I don't like this I'm gonna leave I like this I'm gonna stay like I don't like being treated this way I'm gonna tell you about it and if you don't reciprocate then have the self-respect to you know leave the situation or do what's best for you and it's like people who behave or men men or women like who behave that kind of way you just like you have a sense of like they're they're kind of lost and it's a little bit sad you know yeah well at the end of the day it's about taking responsibility anywhere in your life where you're not figuring it out it's because you're doing something wrong right and so <laughs> not in terms of like you did something bad but maybe you just haven't taken the time to learn how to develop that skill like you talked about communication with your with your man you know like you took the time to develop the skill to communicate and took the time to heal that, right? If you don't take responsibility to do that, you're not going to be able to grow. 
same thing in all these other places, you know, taking the responsibility of like, hey, I might be falling short in this area. However, most people, what they do is that they focus on the areas that they're really good at mm-hmm. and then they avoid the areas that they're really bad at. Yeah. Um, and our ego hates being wrong. So mm-hmm. <laughs> being able to look at those areas and be like, oh, like I need to focus on this. Um, we went on a little ram- random path there, but I'm yeah. um, going back into your sales like journey, I guess. What do you feel like has like been the like the craziest like moment for you where you're like, man, I really know what I'm doing. Like, I feel really good. I'm really proud of myself. Like, what was that moment for you? I honestly like when I started this uh, new sales career, my my latest like job that I'm in. I think I like the second month we had this major sale and I sold like 15 K and like my one paycheck was like 9,000 or 10,000 or 11, $11,000 in one paycheck. And I was like, Oh my God, like I have never seen this money, this much money in my life. Like, and it wasn't even like difficult either. And I wasn't even that like, this is before you and I started working together. So like anyone can do it. Like you just have to learn that baseline It was just like, like mind blowing though. My manager messaged me. She was like, dude, you're doing so good. And I was like, this is crazy. I've never seen this much money in my life. Like Mm -hmm. granted, you know, had to pay off some debts and everything. So still going through that, but like being able to just like know that you can put in the work and get a a better outcome than you have before, like work working for a job, making 20 bucks an hour or working for an hour and having a conversation, making like a thousand dollars or dollars from that conversation. It's just very, Does your dad and your mom, like know how much money you're making. They have any idea. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I'm open about this stuff with my mom. Um, she, she had me really young. She had me at like 17. So I feel like her and I like, developed kind of at the same time so we're both like cheering each other on to like do new things like she just started a new business and I like had to push her to do that and I'm like showing her all these self-help books and like Joe Dispenza follow this person on Instagram um so yeah like I share the numbers and stuff with my with my mom and she's just like really proud of me and knows that we can do anything if we put our minds to it. So that's amazing. Yeah. Like mine's opposite. I don't share. (laughs) I don't, I'm not going to wait. Can we? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to, I don't share like with certain people anymore because some people like they don't even mean it. They just don't even understand like what kind of mindset I have. Yeah. So it's like they'll automatically drag you back. So, so sometimes I don't share like the nitty gritty details of things with certain. Yeah. People. My dad called me a couple months ago. It was so funny. He was like, oh, my gosh, like your sister is making one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. And I'm just so proud of her and telling me all this stuff. And I'm just like. <laughs> You're like, I made that in a month. <laughs> Uh, I was like, dad, I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> you're doing like, great, sweetie. I'm just like, you're doing great. I was just like, you know, it's fine. But then it was really yeah, interesting because I think the old version of myself would have tried to prove myself. To prove myself to him to make like to get his approval. I think I would have tried to do that. And then now I was just like, okay, dad, that's amazing. I'm so happy for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I mean, you have to meet people where they are. Yeah. They're never going to understand. Like some people won't understand where you want to go and that's okay. Yeah. And no, I think that like you've taken so much time to really develop the skill and try to figure out what you want. Like what the hell's next, Brittany? (laughs) Like, are you wanting to stay in fitness sales forever? Are you like wanting to branch out? I know you told me like one day you wanted to go train other companies and stuff. Like what are, what do you want to do? Yeah. So I think I'm just going to take this next year or so, maybe a little bit longer depending 
where to just continue to grow myself and become the woman that I want to be. Yeah. And before I can go and train anyone else or start my own business or start my own company, because like I want to be able to do that and provide value to people, but I don't want to come as an inauthentic version of myself. And yeah. I, you know, I don't feel like I've done enough growing to be able to give myself to other people. And that might be a little bit of imposter syndrome, but I think that that's where this whole, um, what do they call it? Like false gurus or gurus? you're right on. I don't think it's bad. I think it's being an integrity. I, I can't stand watching that. Hey, I tried something for two months and now I'm going to teach everyone how to do it and make money. And I'm like, what? That's exactly. mind boggling to me. I just, and that's I why a lot of it. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was done. I was like, I just don't understand. I, and I think that's why, uh, sales has such a bad rep now like and like the online coaching and online yeah. space has a bad reputation because of the gurus and people who have been burned like you'd be surprised how you wouldn't be surprised how often i get on calls with people and they're like yeah i worked with a coach and i gained weight or i didn't change and i followed everything they told me to do for six months or you know like in the fitness like, industry wow yeah. and then you walk into like these gyms and I have conversations with trainers and it's like interesting because why are you a trainer? You know what I mean? Um, so there's test and they just decide one day that this is what's going to happen. Yeah. And then they teach other people to do it without getting the results for yourself. And even when I was a trainer, like I felt imposter, like felt imposter syndrome and I went to school for it and I like, did a bunch of stuff for it. And I still didn't feel like I was good enough because I'm not the, at the level that I want to be. And that's yeah. why I took a step back from that because I don't want to portray something fake to people yeah. or inauthentic. So, yeah. you know, just building for the next year or two, really branding, developing, putting content yeah. out there, educating people on like where I've been, so far um and then hopefully one day whatever comes next whatever the universe will provide to me or god you know yes because um, i don't want to manifest the wrong thing or be too yeah. focused in the, the wrong direction but i do eventually want to train people teach people but obviously like to teach a skill you have to have like what does alex or Mosey say like ten thousand hours or something before you yeah. can master it so it's like I don't want to teach something that I'm not a master of yet either. Yeah, yeah no, I hear you. I think that to piggyback on that, because I was talking to Jeremy about this the other day, I was like, I would not feel comfortable <laughs> training everything that I'm training right now. Like if I didn't have him behind my back, because before I met him, like I wasn't training like so many different industries. Like it was just a few. Yeah. And like, he like showed me, Oh, this is how you tie it into here. And, oh, this is how you tie it into here. Right. And, and then if I have a question about something, like he's right behind my back, he has 20 years like, of experience. You know what I mean? And so it just, it kind of blows my mind too. them seeing like new, like, like different type of trainers and things popping up. Right. When there's not experience, like there's you different levels of learning. Like you have to learn in the trenches. Like I remember walking on job sites, like learning B2B sales, like learning how to walk into places, like learning how to call these people and getting through all these gatekeepers and walking into places and feeling so stupid, like years of that stuff, like years of outbound calling and trying to figure it out. Like that gave yeah. me the, the muscles <laughs> to do what I do today. And I still don't feel like it's enough. Right. And so yeah. it's just, it just blows my mind and I just really hope people like will ask somebody really good questions. Like, Hey, like how much did you make as a salesperson? What did you do? How many calls did you make? What, what did that look like? And asking some questions about somebody and where they've been, how many different offers have you been on? Oh, you te teach this. Okay, great. How many different um, companies have you been with? Like what experiences do you have in those? Like, Help me understand because if you don't have that, right, it's really hard for you to be able to reflect a different perspective to somebody if you only have a couple. Yeah. You know? And interesting too, I was at like a, a networking event this weekend and um, the one guy who spoke, he built like large, 
multimedia like brands for now he works with like Nike and like Adidas and like yeah. really big. But he said when he was first starting out, he would, well, he first started out in like the, uh, like in Vegas, like bar and um, yeah. waitressing, which is funny. Like do all people, all salespeople start as like waitresses? We're because hustlers, like, man. We're hustlers. <laughs> it's in the blood. Um, but yeah, he said that when he first started, he literally had no clue what he was doing, but he would like go to gyms and offer all this stuff and he wasn't able to deliver on it sometimes. And they would drop him after a month. And I'm like, interesting. Okay. So like, what gave you the confidence to be even able to do that? And he said, like, it was just, I didn't care. Like, I just wanted it so bad. I was like relentless and like what I was doing. And I yeah. respect did it only because he said that he would go back after he learned all these skills, like maybe like a year later and like give the gyms free stuff. Um, so I thought that that was, there's like two ways to look at it. Right. Cause if you're an entrepreneur, you're like, okay, I want to get in the trenches. I want to do it. I want to help people. Maybe I don't have the skills, but if I develop them while I'm helping people all, you know, if you're in your integrity, you go back and help yeah. people. But then there's the other side, like, Let's wait it out. Let's take years and then teach people. Which yeah, I hear you. Good. So it's like, where is that middle ground of being able? I think to the middle ground is that if you can't authentically tell the truth to your client, you don't make up something. Yeah. Exactly. Like, Actually, I don't know. And if you say I don't know a lot, there's a big problem. Yep. You know, if it's one thing. Yeah. Right? Like, I think I had a, a client the other day asking me something about like, how do I make sure that legal doesn't shut down like a large enterprise cell. I was like, that's a little out of my wheelhouse. When I did it wasn't enterprise. Like I'm going to go ask Jeremy. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, I'll come back to you. <laughs> you know, like, I'll, I'm like, I have an idea, but I can get a way better verbiage. So let yeah. me come back. <laughs> if you say, I don't know a lot, there's a big issue for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do I lose this? Um, a little bit of cellulite on my legs. Oh yeah. You should do this thing. You should do this thing. Like, and you have no idea what you're doing, like mm, big problem. Use this cream. It'll work. Yeah. Booty, booty uh, lift cream. This Take is a pill. It'll speed up your metabolism. Like there's there just so much out there. All right. Yeah. So we're finishing up here. I, if you are a woman watching this or listening to this, Brittany, what is one piece of advice that you would give to her for like, going after what she wants and um, like learning how to say yes to herself and not let obstacles on her life get in her way. Yeah. Just like do the damn thing. Like you're going to be scared to do whatever you want to do, but what's going to be riskier? Like you sitting there scared to do what you're going to do and never doing it or going for it blind and you know, just like working your way up to getting there. So surrounding yourself with people who are smarter than you, maybe yeah. not even smarter than you, who have done more things than you. I was just listening to a Layla Hormozy podcast and she said she was like, she heard that she, in the beginning of her career, she was um, in a room with a lot of successful people. And this guy was like, I'm stuck at 400K a month. And she was doing only like, you know, like, 50 like 10k or like 50k or something and she's like this guy is stupid like he is dumb and he is making that much money like what am i doing wrong yes you know so the people they might not be smarter than you but maybe they have better <laughs> systems than you or better uh -huh. ways of doing things so surround yourself with people who are where you want to be and work on yourself like those childhood traumas they are <laughs> repressing you from doing things like literally take a yeah. deep dive. What has my childhood been? What am I like as a teenager? Like look back at your life and you're like, okay, this is because of this. And like, just yeah. admit it to yourself, admit it to people, be authentic and, you know, just like always be yourself. Um, and the, the right people will fall into place when they're oh supposed to be, if you are, you know, living your truth. Yeah. When, um, what is it? The student is ready. The teacher is coming. I definitely believe that it's in line with people in your life too. When you're ready for certain people to come into your life and you open that space, like they'll come. 
And I sometimes you gotta get rid of them. That's what I mean. We're on the same wavelength. You said we're moving. I was like, typically people have to leave. We're on the same. Yeah. I was gonna let you go for it. Oh, I was gonna say like, and sometimes removing people from your life or distancing yourself from people leaves space yeah. for new people to come in. Yeah, that's so true. And I think that's the hardest part about growing is that not everyone's going to come with you. And that's the hardest lesson that you're going to have to learn sometimes. It sucks. And yeah. it doesn't make any sense. And you're like, let's all everybody go. But sometimes like people's vision and their mission and what they want to create in their life is not the same as you. And that's okay. Yeah. Uh, you're just owning, again, your authentic self and you wanting to be the best version of yourself that you can possibly be. Like that's everything. So thank yeah. you so much, Brittany, for being on. This is fun. Yeah. Um, I appreciate yeah. you. Excited yeah. for you. We're going to force you to move to Arizona. It's going to be great. <laughs> come out here. Yes. <laughs> I'm in the desert, please come out here. <laughs> we'll hike some uh, mountains. Is that what they have out there? I'm not even sure. I look at a mountain every day for my window. I better know what the real mountain because normally mountains have snow on them, right? And like, they, are these hills that they technically? This is gonna be so bad. Grand Canyon is up there. Have you been there? I have not. I really you want. Know that. I know so bad. It's like four hour drive. I just haven't had the time to be like, oh, let's go four hour drive today to go see a canyon. All right. Well, we'll go. <laughs> Okay, perfect. All right. If you're still watching this and listening to this, we appreciate you for getting all the way to the end, girl. And uh, at the end of the day, you have every single thing inside of you to figure it out. We've been through hell and back. We figured it out. We're still figuring it out. And so just giving you permission that it's okay to get messy and to have fun in the process and surround yourself with people that are going to pull you up. We'll see you on the next episode. Brittany, where can everyone find you? Um, on Instagram at Brit underscore Acevedo, A-C-E-V-E-D-O underscore. Yeah, I'm not on Twitter or anything or LinkedIn. I am. <laughs> Connect with Brittany on Instagram um, and we will see you guys very, very soon. Bye. Bye.